Hey, Worthington Kilborn High School students. This is our PAC period for December 14th, 2022. My name is Mr. Jordan. I'm a history teacher. I'm Allie Cabulo, a mental health specialist. And I'm Miss Abbott, one of the school counselors. Right. Today's PAC period, we're going to start you off with a little bit of video that we think some of you will recognize. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. I just don't understand Christmas, I guess. I like getting presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I'm still not happy. I always end up feeling depressed. Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Maybe Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. You know, poor Charlie Brown. Uh, <laughs> you know, many of us, we look forward to winter break and we look forward to the holidays. It gives us time to step away from school for a while. We come together with our family to celebrate. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes we find ourselves feeling stressed out or even depressed like Charlie Brown. And then for those of us who do find joy and inspiration from the holidays and the events of winter break, the end of the break and the, the return to school uh, can cause kind of a feeling of gloom, uh, particularly during the colder and darker months here in the midwinter. And so today's pack period is entitled, It's Not Always the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And we're here to help you to understand why sometimes you may feel like Charlie Brown, uh, maybe a little bit stressed or even depressed. And maybe everybody else around you seems to be happy, right? And that can be really frustrating. So we're here to try to provide some guidance and support and maybe even offer some strategies to help you cope. So let's watch this ad real quickly. What the holidays give is meant to be shared. It's the new traditions that lift us up and the way our celebrations are prepared. It's making room for all so that our world doesn't feel so small. It's when moments of light bring us closer than before and illuminate those we do it for. What we value most shouldn't cost more. So I want you to remember that so much of what we've come to expect from the winter holiday experience is shaped by advertising. But, you know, advertisers have been doing this for a long time, for decades. They've been selling products on television. And what they do is they deliberately create images of things that they know that we desire. And especially they try to create images that will inspire us to experience feelings that are desirable feelings. So, for example, the feeling of being loved, uh, the feeling of being together with people whom we love, feeling of happiness, uh, the feeling that everything is going just right. And the whole idea is that they want us to create those feelings or they want to create those feelings for us, inspire those feelings in us. And then they want to create a subconscious association between that feeling and their product so that we will be more inclined to buy their product because we associate it with that feeling. And so I want to watch the, the advertisement one more time and look out for this kind of thing and, and ask yourself, does this video capture the, the real truth of the holidays, the, the, the whole truth of the holidays uh, for, for most families? Does it leave anything out? What the holidays give ah, see, is meant look, to be food shared. Is perfect. It's the new Everybody's traditions smiling, that lift us up. Happy. There's no slush. And hey, the look, the, the, the new are fall and snow. It's beautiful. Everything's all tied up in a night. Look, it's making room for look all the gingerbread houses. No problem. So that our world doesn't me? feel so small. When I make gingerbread houses, it's like when moments apart. of light bring us closer than before and illuminate those we this do it for. Really the perfect holiday. What we value most shouldn't cost more. So maybe you get what I'm trying to say. Um, there's a certain extent to which the version of the holidays that we see on television just doesn't quite square up with the reality. And that can be a problem for us because these perfect images form a kind of a subconscious expectation of what the holidays are supposed to be like. And achieving that kind of perfection is unrealistic for the most part. And when we try, 
you try to get that perfect holiday for you and everyone around you, it does lead to stress. And when we fail, it can lead to a sense of disillusionment and letdown that can even develop into depression. And I'll tell you what, social media has not helped. Social media has not helped at all. Uh, you think about when families post images of their holidays to social media. And by the way, every one of these is an authentic Instagram image. Uh, when families post to social media, they take a bunch of pictures of the same thing. And then they select the very best one and they crop it just right. And they filter it just right. And then they post it to sort of create the impression that their family has had that sort of perfect holiday celebration, just like in the advertisements. When I was doing a search for these, uh, and I did a Google, I ended up with 12 different blogs giving people advice on how to take and post the perfect holiday photos on Instagram. And I, we all do this. Everybody, I've seen you guys down in the comments. You do this. You take several pictures, pick the one you like before you post it. And that's fine. It's fun and it's entertaining to present a sort of perfect version of ourselves. But the reality is you have to remember that everybody else is doing that too. And the celebrities and influencers, they take 500 pictures and pick the best one. So the, the reality is that nobody posts pictures of their kids fighting over who got more cookies. And nobody posts pictures of um, dad and mom arguing because somebody forgot to buy tape at the store and they can't wrap the presents. Nobody does that. Instead, we post pictures that present an, uh, the image or the idea or the impression that our holidays were perfect, just like in the ads. And the thing is, we're being overwhelmed by that. And in people's minds, we tend to compare our own experiences with these sort of impossible expectations. And we end up feeling sort of inadequate and stressed out and bummed out that we can't quite live up to that standard. So when you think about the holidays, hope we, we certainly hope to create that sort of perfect experience, that impossibly joyful setting. But realistically, for many of us, the holidays will also bring about stress, maybe a lot of it. Um, so let's talk more about why that is and what we can do to help ourselves. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what is actually going on this time of year. So elevated expectations in the pursuit of this perfect holiday, thats those are just kind of two pieces to this puzzle of what's really going on. Um, the perfect ho like holiday image that we see usually involves family, the perfect family that was already mentioned. Well, here's the deal. Not everybody loves spending time with their family. It could feel a little bit awkward. Maybe you haven't seen them in the last couple of years. It's kind of that forced small talk. And frankly, maybe you don't love spending time with everybody in your extended family. That's, that's a real thing. Um, let's talk about travel. That can be something that's really stressful and feel pretty out of control. So it's crowded, it's busy, you could be delayed, your, can't, your flights can be canceled, all of those pieces. Um, let's think too about, you know, financial challenges. There's this expectation that you're giving and receiving these amazing gifts. Well, I mean, that's, that's a lot of stress on certain families. We have loss that is brought up this time of year. Um, it could be your first Christmas without, right? If somebody has passed away, if somebody's died, or if they've even just moved. And then for some of us, those academic challenges and stressors don't just get shut off um, when we have time away from school. So those thoughts can kind of hang around as well. And some students love this break from an alarm clock, this break from a schedule. However, as creatures of habit, a lot of us really do have a difficult time without routine, um, the things that help us kind of maintain our stability. So if you take a message away, message number one from this pack period is, is there is nothing wrong with you. You're not crazy. You're not messed up if this time of year is something that you know, can honestly just be painful for you. You have a lot of company. So 88% of respondents for one survey said that they described the holiday season as the most stressful time of the year. You'll see some other statistics here on our slide. 38% of people feel an increase in stress over the holidays. We've got this stress over the pressure to give or get gifts. All of the above apply. So then what can we actually do to manage all of these emotions, all of these triggers? 
Well, first of all, you want to acknowledge how it is you actually feel because it is most definitely valid. Um, here are some additional strategies like movements, um, sticking to some form of a routine. So definitely enjoy that extra sleep or sleeping in opportunity, but set aside some time each day for your basic care tasks like hygiene, um, all of that good stuff. Practice relaxation, so you'll try and build that into your break. And we're actually gonna practice a little bit of that next to give you an idea. Acceptance of imperfection and differences, that could be a helpful attitude, as well as the attitude of gratitude. So trying to find little things along the way that you are feeling especially thankful for. Two of my favorite ideas um, include kind of getting out there and showing kindness to others as a way for you to actually feel good and improve your own mood. So these could be volunteer opportunities. It could be donating to a local nonprofit, $5, anything that you can manage. And then this idea of creating new, new traditions, whether that's your given family or your chosen family, especially if the holidays do present challenges for you, it just could be a chance to look at it differently and try a new tradition that actually gets you excited moving forward. Time to actually practice a mindful melt. So this will be really quick and easy. Um, I just encourage you to do your best just to focus kind of um, on the body scan that we do together. But before we jump into it, we want to touch base on what mindfulness is. So in its simplest form, it's just awareness of the present moment. It's an intentional focus on the here and the now. And then we are working in that process of like accepting our thoughts and feelings as they come up. Hopefully mindfulness feels peaceful, calm, relaxed, and content. So go ahead, find a comfortable seat, feet flat on the floor if they touch, sitting up tall. You can bring the eyes closed or you can simply look down at one spot on your lap or the table in front of you. Take an easy breath in and an easy breath out. A moment now to identify what your stress level is. From one to 10, one really relaxed and content, 10 out of 10 would be super overwhelmed, stressed. Just take note of the number you find yourself at right now and keep that in mind. Bring your attention to your toes and your feet. Let them melt into a puddle. This relaxation travels up the legs, knees soften, get really heavy and relaxed. Bring your attention to your stomach, a gentle breath in. Gentle breath out, release any tension in the stomach. This peace and calm travels up the body, bringing attention now to your shoulders as you let them drop even just a millimeter lower. Settling in for another breath. Next, start to relax the muscles in your face. Unclench your jaw. Soften the place between your eyebrows. And one final deep breath here. Mentally note if that number from one to 10 has shifted and open your eyes back up into this space, kind of wiggle fingers, toes, take stretches if that feels good. But notice if this move the needle at all on your stress level, maybe how your emotions are presenting after we did that little mindfulness tidbit. And just know that that's available to you throughout break. And so maybe you're not feeling bad of heading into the holidays, and that's totally okay. But it could be that after the holidays are over, you have that letdown. You are heading back to school. The holiday maybe went the way you wanted, but maybe it didn't. Um, and you're trying to figure out what that's going to look and feel like for you. And you might be feeling 
down. Um, it's super gray, dark, dreary days. Um, there's not as much to be looking forward to. And so we have that let down a little bit um, from what we had wanted to be. And that can be a challenge for people. In part, that's happening because of what's happening for us biologically. We had these feel-good hormones that came um, to, to play in our lives. We got added endorphins from laughing and smiling and being around people that we wanted to be around. And then now we're just back to the same old, same old. It's back to school as usual. It's back to tests. It's back to that everyday routine. And that can be disappointing for some of us. And, and that's an okay thing. Um, if you find that you're kind of struggling a little bit with the, with that feeling. And just as with Charlie Brown and not always looking forward to the holidays, if you're not looking forward to the life after holidays and um, that dynamic of getting back into the routine of life as usual, know that you're not alone in that. Um, I suspect that there's many of you who will start doing a countdown until the next break um, after we get back from winter break. And so if you find that you're somebody that's struggling in that way, what can you do? There's a lot of things that you can actually do to help yourself to feel better if you're struggling in any capacity with that. One, you can reflect back on the things that went well during the holidays. Again, we're not looking for a perfect holiday because that's unrealistic as Mr. Jordan was talking about. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have extra dishes that you're doing or cleaning the house or doing things with people that you maybe didn't really want to be hanging out with. But there were probably moments that were good. Maybe it was getting to sleep in. Maybe it was spending extra time playing with your dog or a new um, gift that you got that you were able to enjoy. And so after the holidays, spending time to intentionally think about those things that did bring you joy, those moments that were a positive. Sometimes you can do that by talking about it with other people or um, going through your phone and looking at pictures of those good moments and being able to honor and celebrate and be present with those moments still. Whenever possible, getting outside. So if it's snowy, go sledding or um, go and shovel the driveway for a neighbor, um, doing something for someone else. Um, Mrs. Cabillo mentioned that already with regards to helping yourself through the holidays, but doing something for someone else can also help you after the holidays are over as well. Spending time with animals, planning something to look forward to. Any time that you can have something that you are looking forward to of what else is yet to come is always going to be a positive. And then again, that volunteering to help other people and knowing that you do make a difference every single day and that you can do that after the holidays as well. It's not just a only at the holiday time can you make a difference to someone else's life. And then the day the prairie dogs lost the big playoff game. Marley missed the winning shot. She felt awful. She wanted to quit. I love the movie Inside Out. One of the things to realize is that joy and sadness live side by side often. And in this little clip of the movie, you saw that some of her happiest, most joyful moments actually started from a place that she was feeling very sad. And so in our lives, it isn't always I am happy or I am sad. We have lots of emotions and they're all taking place at the same time and they get they're very present with us and it's okay to feel multiple emotions at once and know that that is a normal, healthy feeling to have. One of the things that we wanna make sure that everyone is aware is that there is always help available. So if you are struggling, if coping strategies aren't feeling good, if the holidays are really stressful, if life after the holidays are 
are feeling overwhelming and tough, there is help available. Hope is always available. And one of those resources that's available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including all of your holidays, is the 988 crisis text line. You can text. You can text it, you can call it, you can get online and chat with them. You can contact them in any way that works for you. So I would strongly encourage you, if you are struggling, know that you can always find help through 988, calling or texting. And then the last message that we want to leave with you is that we hope your holiday break is filled with peace and joy. <music>